Good evening, gamers and gamettes. A new indie game called Starbound has showed up in a big way this month. After its recent open beta release, Starbound has shot up to the 14th most played game on the Steam network. So what's all the fuss about? Why is a game that has no character limit on names, bad guys straight out of Pokemon, and more game-crashing bugs than Dead Island so enormously popular? Well, maybe it's because it's a fucking good game. Full stop. Starbound is usually billed as Terraria in space. It has the trendy Minecraft triad of exploration, crafting, and destructible environments. As soon as you start, you get to choose from six different races, with a seventh on the way. You've got the Hylodal, fish people who are pacifists and excel at being eaten by the other races, avians for those of you who regret being born with testicles, and Nova kids. I hope you like how they look, because all your friends are going to start playing them as soon as they're released. If you're wondering how race is going to affect gameplay, the answer is that it doesn't yet. So when I play with my friends, we all pick different races and tease the shit out of each other. You get your own spaceship right off the bat, but it's out of fuel so you have to go land on the nearest planet to go get some. It's a good thing that warp-capable starships from the future can run on wooden logs like a steam-powered train from the 19th century. I don't know what the trees in Starbound are made of, but if they're capable of powering faster than light travel, you might want to be careful when you chop them down. Everything is destructible in this game. Absolutely everything, even your ship. Feel free to punch a hole right into the freezing vacuum of space while you redecorate. It doesn't affect you at all. So I guess if you can't find any fuel, you could always swim to the next planet. There are loads of different biomes in this game. You've got Earth-like forests, alien flower planets, mushroom biomes, Japan... Starbound even has a questing system, and I'm betting that modders are going to have a field day with it because the developers didn't get much use out of it. Right now, you pretty much get your starting quest out of the way before Skyrim-like ADHD kicks in, and before you know it, you're on the other side of the galaxy trying to gather up enough bricks to build a giant dong. There just aren't a lot of quests in the game right now, and that's probably because pretty much everything in Starbound is randomly generated, and the engine is pretty good. Villages don't spawn in the middle of the ocean, at least, or with gravel in front of all the doors. Seriously, villages have been in Minecraft for how many years and this still happens? What do the Minecraft developers do all day? <laughs> Fucking Swedes. Anyway, you can dig for ages through massive underground caverns, and that's just on one planet. Yeah, I wasn't kidding. Ages. Huh, so that's where the pit from 300 leads. And it has a huge variety of sickly sweet monsters. The rule here is trust no one. The cuter the monster is, the more likely it'll stomp on your nuts until they pop out your eyes. Once you get enough fuel, you can duck out of whatever hellhole you spawned in, keep exploring, and you'll come across ruins and NPC towns, some of which are so xenophobic that they'll execute you on sight. Hello there, my name is BAM! What the hell? But then some of the time, villagers will trade with you, or look on helplessly while you ransack everything that isn't nailed down, and then mine and pocket whatever is nailed down. <laughs> Later, suckers. Let's talk about crafting. Frankly, in Starbound, it's a step backwards. Everything shows up in this giant list, which has the advantage of teaching you what items you'll need to make something without having to tab out to check the wiki, but it also makes the whole system feel a lot like working in Microsoft Excel. Wouldn't it be nice if the game let you arrange your materials, use tools on them, required some sort of timing or precision? In other words, turned crafting into a fun minigame instead of making it feel like homework. To top it off, anything that isn't decorative is going to require pixels to craft, a universal form of currency that drops from every monster you kill. The fact that you have to grind for cash in addition to materials is causing some grumbles in the community, and I gotta admit, it does get annoying once you're on your second or third character, and you have all the items you need, but you still can't build anything. The only way to trade pixels with players is to convert them into voxels, which causes a 40% loss. And if you like adventuring with your friends, your costs go up, because you have to build multiple sets of equipment for everybody. And pixels are the only thing you lose when you die, which means there's almost always a shortage of them. 
Speaking of adventuring, Starbound uses traditional MMO parties, which lets you see your friend's health, and it comes with the unbelievably useful feature that lets you teleport to any party member's ship. This means that, surprise, you don't have to use cheat codes just to play online. So let's just teleport you over. Last level. Uh, should I give you a teleport up? Um, oh. There you go. Okay, so you spawn in the mouth of the uh, the Balrog. Everything Hello. is totally fucking pitch black, so you can't see where you are. Yeah, you're okay. Let me bring you back here. Hang on, let, wait, 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 wait. Let me just... Okay, I've gotten rid of the pumpkin seeds. I'm safe. Oh, there's a cake. There you go. Welcome back. Multiplayer characters are stored locally as well. So if you want to, you can play by yourself, build up your character, and then bring that same character with all of his equipment onto a server and act like you're better than everyone. You call that a sword? Look at that hick piece of shit. It looks like you nailed a piece of aluminum siding to a block of wood. That sword sure reminds me of your marriage, Jerry, you ding-dong douche nozzle. <laughs> oh, it's great. The combat system is about as simple as it gets. Swing delays cut down on button mashing, thankfully, but the AI runs a typical shortest route to target routine, with very little variety or tactics. Sure, some weapons have special secondary effects, and there are shields and dual wielding, but blocking is automatic, so combat really just boils down to positioning and smashing the mouse. There are monsters everywhere, and the danger of it is exciting at first, but it gets old quick. It's not long before your eyes start to cross from the repetition, and it's not like you care what you're fighting since they all drop the same loot. But that doesn't mean it's too easy. Be prepared to die a few times when you first get started. Do any of you remember the Call of Duty effect where after you got hurt the game smeared jam on your screen and you had to crouch down and shove the controller up your ass for a while before the game would allow you to keep playing it? Minecraft had the same problem when Mo Yang introduced their Gary Busey stupid health regeneration system, forcing you to shove a bushel of carrots down your throat in every fight, punctuated by standing in a hole for so long that you began to ponder all the other things that you could have done with your life. So at first, I couldn't have been happier to discover that there's no natural regeneration in Starbound. It certainly isn't tied to food. You have a hunger bar, and if it goes to zero, you die. That's it. Of course, without any benefit beyond postponing the guillotine, the hunger system has just added tedium, as you're forced to mindlessly stick food in your mouth every 15 minutes, or the game will just arbitrarily kill you. Sure, it's realistic, I guess, but so is doing my taxes. The same is true of the temperature system. Initially, you might welcome the added depth of being able to freeze to death, until you realize that it's just another mechanic that forces you to stand around and do nothing, while you wait near a campfire to warm up. The fact that you don't regenerate naturally is a step in the right direction, and it does mean that even low-level monsters can threaten a well-geared player after a while. But as it turns out, it's possible, even easy, to regenerate. You just have to sleep in a bed. If there's anything that should be added to a list of things that's likely to bore gamers and should not be included, sleeping has got to be one of those things. There's really nothing to do except sit and wait for your health bar to fill up. And because there's different types of beds with different speeds, in the beginning, healing is way slower than it is in other similar games. Just tab out and go to the bathroom, read a book, watch the Lord of the Rings extended cut, and by the time the hobbits finally leave the Shire, you'll be topped off. Which not only means that you've got to carry a ridiculous bed, including mattress and bedpost around with you in your backpack, but you've also got to rely heavily on bandages. You'll run through more of these than the Red Cross did after the Hulk ate New York. However, the music in Starbound is phenomenal. We're talking Chrono Trigger quality here. That's important when you're starting a big building project and all you really have to attend to is the music. If you've never played a 2D crafting game before and you're trying to decide whether or not you should buy Terraria over Starbound, personally, I have to say I like Starbound better. This despite the fact that Starbound is still in beta. Uh-oh, here come the Terraria fanboys, windmilling their tiny swords in rage. Look, both games let you bomb your friends back to the Stone Age, so Terraria is a great game in its own right. But Starbound came second, which means that it's had a chance to fix some of Terraria's fundamental problems. They even added the ability to swim, because seriously, Terraria, what the fuck? My friends and I would drown each other three times per hour, and sometimes it was even by accident. Of course, Starbound is still buggy as hell, and I know it's still being worked on, but they're asking for your money right now, which means that beta is just a label. Even quitting crashes the game. 
So does the music system, which is pretty cool. It lets you automatically synchronize with other players and form a band. Of course, somebody has already modded in the Portal song. And a YouTuber with the amazing screen name Sexual Rhinoceros took it a step further and made a Raining Men mod. First things first, I guess. It's pretty easy to max out in Starbound. I left the server on for a day, and one of my friends got all the way to the endgame in less than 8 hours. I suppose I'd describe Starbound as casual friendly, if I wasn't worried that casual friendly is a euphemism for having less depth than a Japanese kiddie pool. Starbound does have more depth than that, of course. There are logic gates and cables, which means that it is possible to build machines. Even those of you who never got into Redstone should know that having it is a big deal for the longevity of the game. In fact, most of the flaws in Starbound are just due to how young the game is. Sharing levels and custom maps hasn't really gotten off the ground yet, and there's a paucity of good mods. And although the dev team is promising greater mod support, we have heard promises like that before. So what's the final word? Crafting games like Starbound allow for a lot of versatility. My favorite story is about a player who built his house around another Starbound player's house, trapping the other player inside. He'd throw down cans of tuna whenever his prisoner got hungry, and when the prisoner threatened to have his clan raid the structure, he responded only with, it puts the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> and of course, Reddit is full of insane structures that players have built already. In the end, though, playing Starbound just made me want to go back to playing Minecraft again, which leaves me with a few questions. Will there be a Seth Bling of Starbound, a guy who is able to make his living by showing us neat machines? Will this game have a design team on par with the voxel box? I just don't know. But I do know that Starbound is a fun game that's already hooked a lot of players, and that alone is worth the price of admission. Now if you don't mind, I've got to go slaughter an alien army of militant penguins. <laughs>